<laughs> well, now a man from Hitchin is planning to make the same journey, not with Sally Kettle's mother, I imagine, but let's talk now to Scott McNaughton uh, and companion Neil Hunter. They're going to be uh, setting out at the start of December. Scott, hello there. Uh, morning, guys. So you're, morning. Pla you're planning to take Neil rather than Sally's mum? Uh, that, that's right. Although, you uh, know, Sally's mum's got form, so if Neil drops out... <laughs> Yeah, and I guess the difference between Sally's mum and Neil's, Neil's a, a diabetic as well, so... And you're doing it for Diabetes UK? Yeah, that's right. Now tell us a bit about this challenge, because you have to put the money up, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's pretty... It's it's expensive to uh, to, to, to go in. The, the boats themselves cost a lot. They've got some great, pretty technical kit on um, that help us stay safe, really. Uh, so, yeah, we, we're, we're fronting the money, and um, but uh, but everything that we raise basically goes to the, the, the charity. Now, uh, this this is an amazing uh, task. Is it? You're not as new to, to rowing as Sally was. I mean, Sally was virtually a beginner. Have you, have you got previous when it comes to rowing? No. We're, we're oh, pretty similar, actually. Well, Neil, Neil's a submariner, so he's got underwater ah. experience. Well, um, hopefully he won't need it, will he? <laughs> no, hopefully not. Uh, we're... Um, I mean, the, 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 I guess for me and Neil, we, we come, both come from a uh, mountaineering background. Um, I summited Everest last year, and when I came back from there, um, I was looking for a new challenge, and uh, Neil's a good friend of mine, and we kind of had too many beers one night and said, well, how about rowing the Atlantic? Um, as, as you do, obviously. Well, you know, I've done, I've done next, Everest, and, let's and, do the Atlantic. And then the next thing, uh, we find ourselves um, where we are now, which is just a few weeks away from, from, uh, from starting that big expedition. So... And how does that feel? I mean, do you start to get nervous, you daredevil types? I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to make... I mean, I've made I've made decisions, you know, down the pub, but most of the time next morning it's an unspoken thing that we, we didn't mean it. We don't talk about what happened down the pub. But yeah, I, mean, I think that's... The, you know, you reach that point where all of a sudden you've, you've committed and the commitment has moved from thinking you would do it to, to getting on and doing it. Um, and the, 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 I guess over the last few months there have been points at which you really begin to feel that commitment hit home. Mm. Um, we, we had a big um, launch party a couple of evenings ago, a charity fundraising event, and um, I think there, when, when expressing what we're going to be going through to all our friends and family and contacts and people like that, that all of a sudden you realise when you've got 200 people saying, guys, you are nuts, that uh, maybe we are a bit nuts, but it, 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 I'm really looking forward to it. We've put so much into the training and uh, making sure that we are ready from a safety perspective um, and from the, um, the medical side we've had some great help with um, the guy that helped Steve Redgrave and his, yeah. uh, and his Olympic attempt uh, he's been giving us some advice on the diabetes side to help help keep Neil in good shape and yeah because you've got to watch yourselves you know with dehydration and 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 possible fluctuations in temperature how are you going to manage uh, well we've, we the main thing we've got for the dehydrate for dehydration is we've We've got an onboard um, desalinating unit, so we can turn seawater into drinking water. Right. But that's dependent upon solar panels. So if we have a few days where the, it's over, overcast or we're in a storm, um, that's where we begin to run a risk that that machine isn't going to be producing the water we've got. Uh, and that's where we need to be very careful. And, I, and I've had a lot of training in how to put Neil onto a saline drip if I need to, because it's the... It's the, it's the kind of toxins that build up in his body if he's not flushing through with water yeah. wow. that become a problem. Scott, apart from those kind of health concerns, what are the, what are the other main worries for you? Because I thought chafing would have been quite hard from the list. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, this is this is a bit of a, this is a favourite one. Yeah, chafing chafing is uh, is a problem. So you can't wear uh, you can't wear too much. Well, you know how Ben Fogel got around it, don't you? I, I, know, I know, I know. Tell us, Catherine. Tell us. Starkers. <laughs> Although he did say that that didn't limit the chafing. Actually, sitting you know bare bottomed, it doesn't help. Yeah, all, all the guys at work are, are saying to me, look, if, you, if, you, if you're going to do that, don't send us any pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a real concern when you're rowing, that rowing the Atlantic. It's one of the things that puts me off. It's the chafing element. One of the things that puts you off. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the chafing and, and particularly the backside, I think, is going to be pretty painful. Are you um, taking cushions? We're taking all sorts of different types of um, materials that we can kind of change the the, the, the pressure points that are on the actual seat itself. It's a sliding seat like you'd see on a, in a normal rowing boat or on a rowing machine. Yeah. Um, and so we, we're going to change just the types of foam that's on there and, and we've got different coverings for it and things like that just so that we can try and change just where the, where the pressure is um, each time we, we sit down on it. So how long do you think it's going to take you then? Well, somewhere between 50 and 60 days. We've got one of the guys that, uh, the place where I work, he's, he's, he's running a sweepstake on where we're going to finish. And, um, 
Uh, I've, I've got some guys that think we're going to take over 80 days, which no way we're going to take over 80 days. I think I'll be in trouble at work if I'm if I'm still at sea after 80 but, days. Although it's a good excuse. I mean, it's not like you can commute from there, right. is it? No, that's right. But Scott, you, you, chafing aside, you'll be you'll miss Christmas. I know. I know. It it it, it, the, the, it on the serious side, it is. It, that's one of the real downsides. Is I think for my family uh, in particular, you know, it's. We, we put quite a lot of pressure on on them being away, and particularly at times like Christmas. I think for for Neil and I, uh, we'll we'll just get on and, and just keep going. And I think Christmas will, will probably be at the back of our mind, apart mm. from the ten minutes when we have this extra bit of uh, beef jerky that we've put on board. Wow. Oh, treat yourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, I think it, it's the people you leave behind actually that that, that always the case. They Wait. don't stop thinking about all the worst things. So we, we just get on and we'll just get on and do it. No, exa- exactly, and they'll be watching the news every single moment you're away, yeah. hoping that you won't appear, but also hoping that they might see your, your face and see that you're all right. <laughs> then, Scott, are you taking a phone with you? Uh, yes, we are. We've got t- we've got two separately separate working um, satellite phones, primarily because of the diabetes aspect. We, we've yeah. got a 24 uh, backup from our diabetes team, so um, when things go wrong, that that that's a uh, main. Uh, emergency source resource really okay i'm just wondering whether we might be able to give you a ring while you're going oh yeah well fa- that would be fantastic how about on, on christmas day or something like that while everyone's tucking into their christmas dinner and we're having a beef jerky in the middle of the atlantic somewhere. with your chafing chops <laughs> we shall see what we can do but i mean i'd like to sort of follow your progress and yeah. um, uh, and when are you setting out uh the boat that we will ship the boat tomorrow that gets container shipped out to the canary islands where we Blimey. start from uh, and Neil and I are flying out mid-November to okay. start at the beginning of December. So from December and January is when we'll be at sea. All right. Well, listen. If you would g- give us your number, and we'll um, we'll sure. provide a little bit of distraction maybe on the way. I don't know if, whether that'll be a help or a hindrance. <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Probably a healthy little mix of both. Yeah. It's, I wish you both the very very best. Can I? Uh, we, we are keeping a blog. Could I? Of course can you I can. give you my uh, website address? Yes. Maybe your listeners could have a look and. Uh, uh, and, and follow us as well. Sure, yeah, go on. It's uh, www.twomenpulling.co.uk, uh, and that's two, the number two. Yeah. Um, but if uh, th- and th- there's a blog on there called the Ship's Log, and we've we've already been keeping that up to date with how we've been getting on training and things. Great name, by the way, twomenpulling.co.uk. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right, well, we shall watch that, but but also hopefully speak to you when when you're on your travels. Great. Good luck. Thanks for your time. Uh, by the way, you know you said 200 people have told you you're mad. Yeah. May that 202. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Scott and McNaughton there, who Those is fellas. quite mad, but also very brave. Very I couldn't brave. do anything like that. Could you? No way. So he's just come back from over. I thought, well, do you know what? Let's do the Atlantic. I used to do a bit of rowing up and down the ooze. That was enough for me. Quite frankly, the Atlantic can wait. You can text the double seven six zero one seven three seven three seven. We are talking about the BBC this morning. It's, it's the one thing you do want to talk about. That's fine. Pick up the phone, get your voice on the radio, text an email, or deal with all your queries. Thank <laughs> you.